So I actually got the chance to talk to a scientist from NASA about the science behind total solar eclipses and what happens if it is a cloudy day the day of the eclipse. Thankfully, it looks like we are avoiding that, but take a listen. Okay, so we'll just get right to it. Starting off the eclipse, a lot of people excited for it, but might not necessarily understand the science behind the eclipse and why this is happening. So can you kind of explain that? Yeah, so the the moon is moving between the sun and the earth in just the right location that the moon's shadow is cast down on the earth. And if you are right at the center of that shadow, there's a line called the path of totality where you will see the moon completely block the sun out. And when that happens, the outer atmosphere, which is a million times fainter than the, the disk of the sun, will be visible. And so that's a the, you know the full spectacular event of totality. And if you're just outside of that path, um, everyone else in most of North America will see the moon move across and slowly kind of eat away at the sun. And you will see, I believe in Fayetteville, it's going to be like about 98, 99%. So just a tiny little bit of the sun will be left. So you won't actually see that outer atmosphere, but you will see almost all of the sun completely blocked by the moon. So a lot of people are making the trip here to Arkansas to see it in totality, especially in Russellville, Clarksville, those areas. So I know a big question, if it's cloudy, will people still be able to see that there's an eclipse happening? You will, even if it's cloudy, because, and in some ways, the clouds may actually make some of it more, even more intense, because the light is going to decrease, the temperature is going to change, the animals will respond because the animals are going to think, hey, it's nighttime, you know, all of a sudden. So I've heard crickets come out, roosters crow, um, a lot of barnyard animals kind of go back to their, their nighttime homes. So you, you will not just see it, but you will experience it. And so I've been in eclipses where it was completely clouded out. But it got pitch black, even darker than it did if there were no clouds. And so will it look different um, just like in what people see? Like, will they still kind of see that outline of the sun behind it or no? Um, I guess it depends on how, you know, how thick the clouds are. I mean, you can still even see if the clouds only partially cover, you know, you'll still get a chance to see that because the light itself will change because you're kind of sitting under this shadow. And so every direction you look around is like is like dusk, is like sunset. So you're going to get this really cool, completely immersive sunset experience. Yeah, and this might kind of be a silly question, but a lot of people might be wondering if there are clouds out there, do they still need those glasses to look up at the eclipse? If, if you're in totality during that narrow period, you don't need your glasses. In fact, you want to take them off to see anything. However, as long as you're outside of that path and during the partial phase, you always want to wear those glasses if you're going to look up at the sun. Now, there are indirect ways you can do it. Um, lots of things will create little pinholes, including the leaves on the trees, or you can even take your own hands and kind of cross them like this and it projects them on the ground. So that's a way to look at it, even if you don't have those glasses, but you just, the, the basic rule of you should never look at the sun applies even during the partial phase of the eclipse. Okay. Awesome. And then can you kind of explain why this happens only every so often? Well, it, it happens. We actually get an eclipse two times a year. Um, we don't get one every month during a new moon because the way the moon moves around the Earth, it actually moves kind of at an angle. So sometimes it's a little bit above the Earth and sometimes it's a little bit below the Earth. Um, so, th so that shadow is actually cast out into space. But twice a year, it's actually in the right plane where it's in the same plane as the sun. And so that's blocking the sun out. You don't always get a total eclipse because the alignment still has to be really perfect, that happens roughly every 18 months. So we have eclipses all the time, but really what also makes it so rare and exciting is the shadow itself is very tiny compared to the Earth. So the Earth is big, eclipses happen all over the place, and so you've got to be able to get to where that shadow is, and that's another aspect that makes it kind of more of a, a unique, rare experience. And so for people who have never seen an eclipse in totality, 
kind of what would you tell them to explain what this experience is going to be like or even tell them to encourage them to go outside and take a look at it? Well, I will say even even as a scientist, you know, I found it to be kind of a life changing experience. It's really, really amazing. So as the sun is getting closer and closer to being completely blocked out, the light around you changes. It gets kind of gray and silvery. The the temperature will start to drop. Again, you will you'll hear the animals start to respond. You may hear um uh, crick, the crickets coming out or a rooster's crow. I've actually even seen pictures of dolphins in the ocean looking up when this is happening. Um, so all of this is happening around you. You're sort of surrounded in this dusk like like situation. And then all of a sudden, the moon completely moves over. This wispy outer structure shows up and it feels almost like time stops. You just it's just sort of this amazing halo above you. And then it turns around and kind of does the reverse. And it's just such a, a a sensory, exciting sensory overload because it's not just seeing it, but feeling it and hearing it. Um, and it, it, I highly recommend it. If anybody has the chance, it's well worth it. Uh, and for NASA, kind of what is y'all's job the day of the eclipse? You'll have teams that will be split up across the country. What will y'all be doing? Well, you know, part of what we're doing is to is to engage the public and to help everyone get an opportunity to see it and experience it safely. But also, it's a unique science experience. Um, the visible corona, the part we see during a total solar eclipse, can only be seen during that time um, and only from the ground. So it's a unique opportunity for NASA scientists to study this part of the sun's atmosphere that it actually has a very important influence on our lives. It creates what we call space weather, solar activity, big explosions like solar flares, those impact our technology. And so it's important for us to understand that part of the sun so that you and I can make sure that our cell phones continue to work and our GPS, um, make sure astronauts are safe. Um, and it's also an opportunity to study the upper atmosphere because it's changing the clouds and the structure. And so it's an opportunity for scientists, including meteorologists and uh, climate scientists, to study the Earth's atmosphere at the same time. 